Hey everybody, Stu Smith here going live, taking some questions, <clears throat> giving some answers today. Uh, it's a pretty big week for some people. Some people are going through hell week right now. And I always like to somewhat reminisce, uh, remember that challenging week, but also um, keep some people in my thoughts and prayers just going through it because it is it is a tough week. It is the culminating week of the first four weeks of buds which is a 26 week program but those first four weeks they suck the most you know that you will be running with boats and carrying logs throughout that phase until about midway through hell week you put those logs away and you won't touch them again unless you really screw up but that's a when you secure those logs for the last time, that's, for me, I think it's just as big as graduating buds. Because after that, buds is still hard, don't get me wrong, but you are definitely uh, um, learning more stuff. Than, and, it, and you're getting fed by a fire hose, things that you've never done before, chances are. And you have to learn it well and pass it to the standards that you're doing, whether it's scuba diving, shooting, land nav, you know, variety of other tactical skills, patrolling, all those things are getting graded. So it's just different after those first four weeks. And Hell Week is really just kind of the where the attrition ends, so to speak. There's some people that don't make it after Hell Week 2 for certain events. But most of the ad attrition is just getting to Hell Week, those first three weeks where probably half your class is gone by then. And then you'll lose another probably 25% or another 50% of the class, which puts you in that anywhere between 65, 75% graduation or failure rate, uh, about a 25 to 30% graduation rate after this week so you pretty much have your working class after this week and it's just 120 hours of straight movement and activity um the one th some advice i have for folks if you're interested in this um is one there, there are three things that can end this week for you quicker than anything other than your own mind playing games with you and making you doubt your choices in life. Um, the big three are hydration, water, electrolytes, and food. If you're not keeping up with those three things, you will not have the energy to keep moving through this week. So every six hours you get to eat, and that is your time to prepare for the next six hours. So I always tell people, make it to the next meal. Some people say, make it to the next evolution. That's fine too. Whatever floats your boat. But just know you get to sit down, you get to eat, and you get to hydrate. It's a glorious moment in, uh, in Hell Week. If you just make it to that next meal, that's a, that's a powerful way to get through it. Just little chunks of it versus on Monday this morning thinking, you got to get till Friday because there is no light at the end of that tunnel at all. You are going to have to shorten that tunnel in your mind by making it to that next meal, make it to that next meal, get through that next evolution, make it to the next meal. And that's how you eat away at it. Next thing you know, you're over halfway done. You're hallucinating. Put the logs up a day before. No, won't ever touch the logs again. That's pretty momentous. And you just keep moving on. Um, let's see here. Trying to see um, what we have over on this side. Got Instagram just popped up. I realized I didn't go live on that. So we are going to take questions. Um, once again, it's Hell Week. And we will... Uh, discuss that if you want. Uh, but I don't know if you guys saw my post, especially over there on uh, 
uh, Instagram, I put a post in my story and a post in yesterday, just about Hell Week, and some of my advice of being a team player. You know, if you lose, you lose. Take it like a man. Don't be bickering at your boat crew because you lost something. You're going to lose things. Take it like a man and move on. Try to win the next event. So there's a lot in that one to unpack. So if you got questions, um, yeah, send them. Looks like we got a few uh, questions over here. Looks like somebody got disqualified for uh, lung issues. Should I get a second opinion from a civilian doctor? I mean, try. Um, I, consistency can also, you know, be a big <clears throat> difference maker in how you do it yeah i i don't know um i don't know a whole lot about the medical waivers other than my own personal ones though i've seen multiple medical waivers occur throughout the years for various things so you never know you know keep keep fighting it and see if see if it works i i put it this way i wouldn't take no for an answer, your first answer. Give it at least the old three strikes you're out rule. And see if that helps. Morning, Stu. What's the best way to prepare for land portage at Buds? Mm, good question. I would say rucking on the sand <clears throat> is probably the best. And then, you know, you're not always going to be rucking or carrying boats on the sand. Uh, most of it will be on the sand, but you'll be running it on the, getting it across to the other side of the base, which is across the road and on the road. Um, so, you know, rucking on pavement, rucking on sand, rucking on multiple uh, types of ground just to get used to that impact. Um, and if you don't have that available to you, something we do is we find a hill or we do weight vest or backpack stair climber machine. That's a really good way to do it too. Then put a backpack on and do some walking lunges anywhere, sand or you know regular ground. And that will also help you with the type of load bearing uh, challenges that you will see when you're carrying a lot of equipment or boat on your head for instance uh and i see you today good luck to the guys that are going through hell week yeah yeah let's see what else we got over here i think we got some questions how do i balance calisthenics and lifting that's a good question we usually do it a couple different ways um i will say this you know there's a calisthenics and cardio and there's lifting you know you need to do all three um especially if you have a weakness. Now, if you're coming from a strength background, just focus on cows and cardio. If you're coming from a uh, endurance background, you still need to maintain your endurance, but you need to lift more probably and do your calisthenics as well. You do it a couple different ways. I usually do it this way. <clears throat> we'll go through a calisthenics workout like today. We did the PT pyramid and we ran. Um, one to 10, back to one, run a quarter mile every set. That's 19 400s, 4.75 miles. You can jog an extra one to get five miles. Um, on top of 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 sit-ups, 100 dips. Kind of a standard, good intermediate, advanced level workout. If you want to take it up to 12 because 10 is too easy, do it. If you want to double the pull-ups, do it. Um, it's up to you how you want to do that, but that matters. That workout matters. You need that for muscle stamina and endurance. That's a great way to build it. Now, what do you do in the afternoons? We we'll usually swim before the next event, but some people due to their schedule, they will go lift all the muscle groups that we just did. Not crazy, not looking for one rep max stuff, just getting in a little bit more volume of bench press, pull downs, bicep, military press, you know, all those things, nothing crazy, you know, three or four sets, 
eight to 10 reps. You know, you're not trying to become a power lifter here. You're just trying to add some auxiliary movements to your calisthenics. That should be the goal there. Because I will tell you this, it is really difficult, if not impossible, to get better at muscle stamina, calisthenics, and cardio events while you are trying to get stronger. You can improve in one, maintain the other, or you can improve your strength and try to maintain the other, right? So um, that's why we come up with the seasonal tactical fitness periodization programs. If you guys check out that term, seasonal tactical fitness periodization, you'll see some great articles written about it. In fact, I've you know, the, these programs are right here. So this one right here, increase strength and crush the PST. This is a winter lift cycle done with a block periodization model where you do three weeks of lifting, running and swimming too. Some calisthenics as a warm up. So you're just trying to maintain your cows and cardio while you're focusing on this lift. Then you take a week off of lifting every fourth week and you focus on cows and cardio. That's my winter lift cycle, which we just got out of. Now we're going into the spring cycle where we start to progress our running and our calisthenics, but we're going to try to use that block periodization model to maintain all the hard gains that we just gained during the winter lift cycle because we have some guys that picked up 10, 15 pounds of mass. We have guys that you know, really improve their squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead presses, weighted pull-ups, all of those things. So we don't want to lose those by just ditching weights altogether and going into calisthenics only, especially if you're a hard gainer. Once again, if you're a strength athlete, I would lift minimally, like just maybe once a week for just some, just to get a pump. That's it. Everything else needs to be cows and cardio. We got a football player right now that's just getting crushed by the PST who works out with us. And, you know, super strong guy, dropped 40 pounds already, close to that. Um, so he's in that zone and um, just trying to become a better endurance athlete, right? While, while not losing all his strength. But he's really needs to focus on his cows and cardio if he wants to get a contract. <clears throat> All right. So that's kind of the dilemma we have whenever we're focusing on improving PST and improving strength at the same time. It can be done. I've seen it with this block periodization model where you do three weeks of one, one week of the other. Three weeks of cows and cardio, one week of lifting. That's where we are now. We just got out of three weeks of lifting, one week of cows and cardio, just to help maintain our cows and cardio while we're trying to get stronger. Now, we're shifting that out, progressing our running mileage every week, progressing our reps. So we're running. We're still going to progress with running in cows for three weeks, take a little deload week and do a lift. So we're going to flatten out our running progression, focus on a lift, lift week. And then kick back up next three weeks will be the running progression. Fourth week will be a lift cycle or lift week. That has been working very well for us. Um, and that is probably the best way I have seen to do both of those together. And actually see some improvements on both of those. Now, are there other ways to do it? Sure. You could do it multiple ways. But. You know, trust me when I say, you know, that system works. In fact, here's our spring training program. If you're into the spring training cycle and you're trying to get better at cows and cardio while you maintain your hard earned gains, spring training works real well. In fact, we are doing, we are going to do that program with a few tweaks um, this cycle. I'm overweight now. I'm usually 175, but currently 205. Should I run more or swim more without hurting myself? Well, that's going to kind of depend on you. Personally, if you're, what's that, 30 pounds overweight, running you're going to feel. But running's a good calorie burner. But you know what? So is biking. You know, if you bike hard, 
right? I'd get on a assault bike or a stationary bike, you know, work really hard on those, less risk of falling off and hurting yourself going 20 miles an hour. Um, and swim, yeah, absolutely. But also just watch what you eat. You know, half of this is also going to be not, you know, being a glutton and uh, just eating too much. So you're going to have to watch both ends of that caloric sp spectrum by watching your calories coming in and putting out more calories on the back end. And I'm in the same way. I'm about 210 right now, trying to get to 195. You know, every lift cycle, I pick up weight. It just never fails. Um, but that's what spring's for. I get to rip it up a little bit and uh, burn some more calories and still lift too and all that. Let's see. What else we got? Yeah, that balance, calisthenics, cardio, and lifting is so common. I run on the treadmill three miles, swim a thousand, lift, and then do abs, but it hasn't gotten me far. But my main concern is losing weight to get to 205 and 195. Well, it sounds like you're burning the calories you need to lose that kind of weight. You need to look at the other end of the calorie. What, what are you eating to make you gain weight? Or maintain weight. You're going to have to have a caloric deficit at the end of the day. That either means by eating a little less and working out a little more, combining those two, and you, you burn more calories than you consumed. That's probably the best way to do it. I've come from no athletic background. Oh, you're still asking questions. 1.5 is 1140. Swim is 1120. Um, yeah, that's pretty basic. Um, you got you got some work to do, for sure. Yeah, I would, you know, I, I would tell you if you're new to running, the last thing you want to do is just arbitrarily double or triple the mileage that you do in a week, and be thirty pounds overweight. You know, that's just going to be a recipe for you nursing shin splints, feet injuries, knee tendonitis, and maybe even a stress fracture. So don't do that to yourself. All right. Is it possible to come train with you at some point for a weekend or maybe even a week? Sure. That's what we got people doing it right now. People are spending their spring break here with the guys and me. Um, yeah. Heroes of tomorrow.org. Check it out. Long as you are preparing to serve or have served or serving, you could come join our free training program. It is free. Can't argue with the price. I'm not trying to sell you anything. It's a free training program if you're wanting to serve. I use this training program for me as well. They're my workouts that I like to do, as well as training others to do them better than me. And I figure if I'm going to write about coaching, I should be coaching. And that is what I do six days a week, pretty much every week of the year. Just for a couple of hours. It's not like it's not my full-time gig. I go from six to eight o'clock and then I work in the afternoon with some other guys. All right, let's see what we got here. It's supposed to be on a selection course this week, but it's been pushed back to the end of September. Was in good spot for it. but. How should I split up my summer now? Heavy lifting now, cows and cardio in the summer? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I would say, um, you know, whatever new you've neglected to work on this selection, go back to it a little bit because you probably overworked something, right? Maybe take it down a notch with something. So, yeah, like if you've been running a lot and doing a lot of cows and cardio, you know, let's take a winter, uh, lift cycle, do a lift cycle for like six, 10 weeks. And then, you know, over the summer, get back into your cows and cardio and crush that thing in the, in September. Navy recruiter location. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, you, Instagram is filled with location markers. Yeah. I'm in Maryland. 
but come on, man. Heroesoftomorrow.org. If you go to that website, you'll see a location. End times. Currently in the Air Force, but I'm looking at Army Rangers and Green Berets, so blue to green. But it is 24, 25-year-old too much, too old. No, man. 24, 25 is perfect. <clears throat> I think 18 is too young. I'd say maybe 40 is too old, but I've seen 40-year-olds make it through Green Beret and Ranger training. So what do I know? You know, it's not like you have this little window of 18 to 20 that you need to go serve. But so many people think that. This is a it's a barn door. I mean, you got from 18 to 30 plus, even in the most spec ops programs. So quit selling yourself short. Man, I wish I was 25 years old, knowing what I know now. Or not. You gave me good advice years ago, and the things you said really helped me get my contract. Good. Good luck. Good job. I have a small plate in my foot. Do you think it would disqualify me for trying to go seal? I'm 17 right now. Plan on enlisting in 18. How about this? Plan on enlisting when you are ready, not just because you're 18 years old. Too many people set a timeline for themselves, and they don't really set a performance starting line. First of all, crush that PST before you even talk to a recruiter. You have a plate in your foot. Yes, it's going to require some kind of medical waiver. Any surgery requires a medical waiver. And if you have metal in you, I don't know. Sometimes people have to get it removed. Sometimes it's waverable and you can leave it in. I don't know. Not a military doctor. And they're all over the place. What's your opinion on pre-workout and creatine while training? Um, neither. I don't, I don't take either one. Though I'm not opposed to creatine. Uh, pre-workout, I don't need the ca caffeine before I work out. And I especially wouldn't work out on pre-workout if I'm doing calisthenics and cardio. Because your heart rate's going to skyrocket naturally when you're running and doing calisthenics. Um Last thing you need is to be at 120 before you even start. My girlfriend's trying to cut 30 pounds with me in the spring cycle for tactical fitness cycle. Good. Any suggestions for her as a partner workouts or workout together? For now, she does what she can. That's what I would do. My advice would be... Um, you know, these workouts are scalable. You just got to get creative and do it. Whether you're doing fewer sets, lighter weight, uh, fewer repetitions, shorter distances. You know, you can make these things one end of the spectrum or either. You make them easier, you make them a little bit harder, depending on your ability. And that's, a, that's something you have to do with generic training programs. Because this workout right here, as good as it is, it's not personally designed for you, right? This is kind of designed for a mass of people and you have certain strengths and weaknesses going in that, you know, my repetitions may be too easy for you in push-ups, but it may be very hard for you in pull-ups or the running miles may be too much for you. And you have to pull back a little bit and be a little more logical with your progressions. You might not even know how to swim and you have to replace all the swimming with biking. Do that. <clears throat> but yeah, I think it's great. Keep doing stuff together. That's awesome. Uh, just went SQT grad of a buddy in January. He made it all the way through with no rollbacks or injuries. Yes, that, that's rare. I was rolled back third phase about six weeks before graduation, and I, I was that sucked. But in hindsight, you know, I got to be part of another class, and my you know experience of buds doubled, right, with the people that I went through with. So it was it had its um, had its benefits too. 
Hey, Stu, I served my last day on active duty today. Hey, man, congrats. Been active eight years, and I'm heading to Alaska State Trooper Academy. You have any law enforcement academy type prep program? I do. Absolutely. In fact, if you email me, Stu at StuSmith.com, send me like what you know you have to uh, pass, you know, in that, you know, every state's a little bit different with their fitness tests. You know, some may have obstacle courses and some call them post tests. Um, you know, let, let me know what you got to prepare for. And, um, you know, chances are the eight years of service you've already done will be sufficient to your training as long as you're like in a good level of conditioning because there's nothing really they're going to throw at you that's going to be a surprise with calisthenics and cardio. But you never know. There may be some different activities you need to prepare for. So just email me. Give me some ideas of what you got to do. And uh, I think I can direct you in a certain way. I usually do my run, swim, and lift back to back to back. Is that wise? That's what I like to do. I've already run, and I've already did calisthenics, and I'm swimming at lunch and lifting later. So I do it both ways. Today, I did not do it back to back to back because um, I have a busy morning, and I had to be done by 8. Um so we just ran and did calisthenics this morning, swimming at lunch and lifting in the afternoon. So, so yeah, I do it both ways. Have you ever not slept in your rack so you don't mess it up? <laughs> um, no, I've never not done that. I've never done that. Um, I will say this, though. Uh, I make my bed, get it all <clears throat> tight and everything the way it's supposed to be. Then I get a comforter that I like. I just brought from home with a different pillow. Sleep on that pillow and comforter, fold it up, put it in my locker, and then get a clothes hanger, sh you know, tighten everything up on the bed, make it look perfect, get the pillow that's all tucked in the way it's supposed to be. Boom. Got it done. Three minutes. Less than. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't sleep on a floor. That's just not necessary. Let's see what else we got over here. Uh, when I do underwaters, I go further per stroke when gliding to a near stop before and after kicking and before and after arm pulling. Any feedback? <sighs> I'm not really sure what that is. It's hard for me to teach swimming, imagining you swimming. And then giving you feedback. Like if you send me a video of you doing it, I can tell you exactly what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. So what I do is kick off the wall, big double arm pull, hold that glide as long as I can. And then kick and recover, hold that glide, and then repeat. So... I personally think you're going to glide a lot further from the double arm pull and that glide there versus the kick and recover and that glide there. Because there's two glides in an underwater recovery stroke. There's the pull glide and then there's the kick and recover glide. But yes, your kick and recover glide is going to be shorter than your arm pull glide most likely. And you want it to be that way. Because you don't want to waste a lot of energy. In fact, I usually kick really lightly whenever I kick and recover. Um, just because those muscles suck up a lot of oxygen. You know, they're bigger muscle groups. So you will use oxygen the harder you use them. So use your arms and lats to pull those, uh, pull you through the water a lot further. And then be tight on those streamlines so you glide faster and further. I think I answered that correctly. I'm not sure, but I could I could see you. Thoughts on Jake's PDF? You know, I've never seen it. Um, so I really don't uh I don't have an opinion. I do have an opinion on this. 60, 70 miles a week and run swimming 25,000? Yes, way too much. Half that is sufficient. 
All I'm gonna say huge respect. Good luck to you guys. Give it everything you have. Yep. I managed to increase my pull up numbers to 40 under two minutes, but now I'm working with a weight vest to increase my numbers. Then I'm doing pyramids too, and I'm doing a mix of strength with volume. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, yeah, that's really good. You can do 40 pull ups, but I will tell you this you don't need my help with pull ups if you can do 40. I mean, the most I've ever gotten is 35. So you've already beaten me. So congrats. My thing is that you're doing a lot of volume of pull ups and push ups. Is just don't do them every day. In fact, some weeks, instead of doing it three times a week, just do it twice a week. And I guarantee you, you will see improvement with your, one, you're going to be better recovered going into those max rep set workouts um, by doing it twice a week. And, that, you know, you can do it three times a week two or three times a week in a row and then do one week with it's only two times a week. But you need to you need to try to deload a little bit. Something I've seen guys do that are trying for really big numbers is one week they do three times a week. The next week they do two times a week. So it's kind of a work semi-deload, work semi-deload cycle. And that, that seemed to work for them as well to go from 40 to 50 if that's something you want to do. But if you're trying to go to budge, you don't need to do that many. Can you explain your article, Don't Be a Tim, ah, from the guy named Tim that I wrote that article about? <laughs> and it was a joke. I was just messing with you because you're so pickable. So let me see. Let me get that article. Don't be a Tim. Stu Smith. All right. Let me see here. Let me see if the old Google machine could find it like that. I might have to put the dots in between it. Yeah. So I made an acronym of Tim. T I M. I can't believe it. Where is it? It's over on YouTube, I thought. Or no, no, no. It's over on uh, military.com. I can't believe it, Tim. I can't find it on the Google machine. All right, let's see if I can find it on the military.com um, search. Don't be a t.i.m. dot. I just can't remember what I uh, wrote for you. So that's why I'm trying to call it up. I think it had something to do with team player. It is not finding it. It does not like that article, Tim. Terribly sorry, can't find it. But you inspired me on that article. Yep. See, look, look what, ah, oh, I found it. Thinking about military service, don't be a Tim. So I'm going to answer your question. Don't be a Tim and avoid these three things. So I used your name as an acronym. T, don't think or talk too much. Think or talk too much. I think we know why we wrote that one. <clears throat> All right. And I don't idealize the profession right a lot of times you got to be a realist in this journey don't be like so pollyannish that you think this is the greatest thing ever and the best job and there's no losers and you know there's shit bags everywhere just understand that <clears throat> not saying that you are one just saying just be a little more realistic in your future pursuits. Um, and then M is don't just maintain the minimum standard, right? You got to exceed the standard. So in other words, 
don't talk or think too much, but do more research, right? Do more research in your journey. Don't idealize serving, even though it is one of those jobs you will be most proud of for the rest of your life. And don't rely on minimum standards to get you where you're going. So don't be a Tim. So thanks for bringing that back up, Tim. Good times. Good times. I hope you are well. Um, shipping off for pararescue in 99 days. Damn. Got it. Countdown. Um, what are some tips for strengthening my mind when it comes to water confidence? My advice is do more water confidence. 100%. Um, yeah. In fact, I don't know if you've seen the Air Force 5050 workout. Google this. I want you to Google this. Air Force 5050 workout, Stu Smith. And then uh google drown proofing skills let me see what it's called the actual article is called workouts and techniques that help with drown proofing safely this is a two good really good articles so workouts and techniques that help with drown proofing safely in the air force 50 50 swim workout Stu smith Went from being on the couch to running so far three years now. Any advice on bringing 1.5 from 11.40 to 9? Should I focus on longer, slower runs or faster, shorter runs? Well, thing is, you know, chances are you're already doing enough longer, slower runs. That's my guess, right? I'm just guessing. A lot of people when they're running 11.40 aren't really running fast to do that. Right now, maybe you are maybe a you know, eight minute mile is your max capacity right now. So you don't need to run. You know, eight thirty or nine minute miles much. You know, to get faster, if you're trying to increase your volume, your aerobic capacity, yes. But it also depends on how many miles per week you're getting. My advice is let's progress up and now. If you've been running for three years, let's try to work on some speed. Have like two days a week where you're focusing on not sprinting, but learning your pace. And my advice would be to right now you're you're right under sub eight mile pace. Let's practice sub seven mile pace and try to get that down to a 1030. So that means your miles will be a seven minute mile pace, your 800s will be a 330 your quarter miles will be your 400s will be um a 145 minute 45 seconds work on those work on that pace then you play around once you get it to a seven minute mile pace you get it down to a six minute mile pace let's see here Couple more questions. Being in Maryland, man, do you know Chief Black? He's my mentor where years back. I've known Chief Black since 1988. So we go way back. In fact, I just bumped into him the other day. So, in fact, Chief Black was the first SEAL I ever met and talked to when I was 19 years old. He's just a few years older than me, but he was. Well, he's probably about 10 years older. Um, great guy, though. Great guy. Uh, let's see. I like this one. Um, Don Shipley speaks uh, speaks to a lot of SEALs in his uh, podcast. And he said about Hell Week was, put your mind in neutral and your ass in gear. It's a really good way to think about how to get through hell week because the last thing you need to do is two things is think about how bad it is so you got to like just think about something else think about your buddy think about eating in six hours whatever that is just get over what you're dealing with um don't let your thoughts get into your own head in fact there's a great saying called um 
don't listen to yourself, talk to yourself and make sure that talk is like positive. Um, and then the other one is don't let the instructors get in your head because I promise you they will be. They're going to be seeing weakness. They're going to call it out. They're going to punish you and your boat crew for losing. Just take it like a man. Try to do better next time. You know, that's how you get through that stuff. Um, let's see. I'm running at 530 pace, but can only maintain it for two to three miles. Damn, that's pretty good. It drops down to 6.30. Dude, you don't need my help if you're doing that. Should I focus more on strength and add more volume to increase distance and maintain my 5.30 pace? 5.30 pace is, look, here's the deal. I don't know what you're training for, but let's just say you're training for the PST and buds right afterwards, right? I'm just assuming. I don't know. A mile and a half run sounds like you could do it at a 530 pace. So you're going to be sub nine, maybe even flirting with eight flat on a mile and a half run, which is way above average. Um, then the next thing you have to do when you're at Bud's every week, you're going to have a four mile timed run. And to be above average in that, you just need to be around seven minute mile pace. If you're at 630, you're going to be top 5% of the class. You know, even a seven-minute mile pace is probably going to put you top 10, 15% of the class. So you're fine, dude. You don't need my help with running. You might need my help with something else, swimming, lifting, calisthenics. I don't know, but running is not a weakness for you. Last thing you need to do is try to double down on a strength versus ignore a weakness that's where most people go wrong in this journey no matter what they're doing what are my opinion of weighted ab machines at the gym i don't use them so i guess that answers that question in your book which by the way harry i got about 40 of them so depends on which book you're talking about when it says 1.5 mile timed, is that max effort as fast as possible? Well, it's a recorded time. When I say timed, I usually say one thing. I'll say run mile and a half, and it's just run it. You know, if you want to run it fast, that's up to you. If you just want to jog it, that's great too. Um, now, when I say timed, I'm curious at that time, right? So, Sometimes I'll even put a blank line after that because that's where you're going to fill in your time for that day. You know, if you take a picture of it or print it out or something, and you're going to fill it in so you can go back and acknowledge, okay, so this 1.5 mile, I did it in 920. Three weeks later, I'm doing it in 850. That would show progress. So whenever I say timed or max, that is a test. Test yourself. See what you're doing. So you're going to have good days sometimes. You're going to have bad days sometimes. That's when you take a look at the overall picture. And you can say, like, today was one of the best days I've ever had in everything that I did. I lifted heavy. I ran fast. I swam fast. Man, that's awesome. Now, wouldn't you like to be able to have a formula to do that more often? So my advice is instead of just looking at these scores and saying, hey, I did great today, look at the next previous 24, 48 hours on what you did. Did you work out hard? Did you take a day off? Did you sleep really well? Right? Did you not go out and party till three in the morning? Did you eat really well? Right? Did you whatever? Brush your teeth, you know, write everything down that can help you with performance and um, have a record of what creates a really good day for you and you can replicate it later. Now, do the same thing if you have a really bad day and we have them, you know, the rule of thirds says we're going to have a bad day one out of every three times, right? So. 
um, acknowledge it, see what you've done. Have you been doing too much, not sleeping well, not eating well, went out with the boys too long, you know, whatever, you know, acknowledge it, you know, and actually have some objective answers to why you perform really well and why you perform really poorly. Maybe it'll help you. Is it wise to shift between treadmill and outdoor runs or stay strictly outdoors? Personally, I don't like the treadmill. And the only time I will use a treadmill is if there's ice on the roads and I'm afraid I'm going to slip and fall. That's it. Um, so I, I'll rarely use treadmills. But I will tell you this. Uh, recently, um, one of our guys could only run on a treadmill due to his situation. Like there was no running trails. He couldn't get to the track. He was working and they, there was a treadmill at work. That's where he did his running. So it just he just couldn't get it into a schedule to run on land. So all of his timed runs that he did was on a treadmill. And then he went and took an official test, well, on his own, like did a practice test on his own and realized, holy crap, I'm about 30, 45 seconds off where I was on a treadmill. So it was more difficult to run on land than it was the treadmill. Now, I will say this, if you're nursing, shin splints, uh, tendonitis, things like that, where the impact of the ground can be hard on you, a treadmill is a good option. But also finding soft ground is a good option. Something I like to do is find a high school track that's a turf field or grass field, and I run on the very inside ledge of that track. Even if the track is rubberized, which is very soft, it's even softer on the inside when you run on that turf or grass. So I'll run on the very inside just to avoid the, you know, 210 pound running impact that can occur when you're a little bit bigger runner. <clears throat> All right, last one. I got to go. Uh, would you say first getting stronger first physically? before doing things like running and rucking is advised. Um, not necessarily. I mean, strong, being strong is the foundation of everything. You need to have a foundation of strength somehow. Now, that doesn't mean endurance athletes who've neglected strength all their life, you know, can't go run, can't do calisthenics, because they're, they're really good at that. You know, that that is how it works when I get a cross-country guy coming to train with us, they suck at calisthenics first, but then they're really good at calisthenics. So they're still running fast. They're really doing catch up with everybody on calisthenics, but now they're really weak in weight. So what I have runners do is who are non strength athletes get good at the calisthenics first. Then we build that foundation of their cardio and calisthenics then we go into a weight training cycle where we reduce the running, um, warm up with calisthenics, and hit some heavier weights to build on some strength because they are lacking strength. Most runners, swimmers are lacking strength. So they got the cardio. They can get the cows well. We just got to work on the impact forces of running for the swimmers and uh, building strength for, for both of them. Whereas the strength athlete coming in, he's already strong and probably big. So running progression is very important for the bigger athlete. And he may find that the calisthenics are hard because he's a bigger athlete doing body weight exercises. Might be good for the first set, but multiple sets he gets really weak fast because um, his muscle stamina is just not there. So. I try to just keep him off the weights and we slowly progress with running. In fact, we may even mix in more non-impact cardio, like almost like a 50-50 split of running and non-impact cardio. Or we even do the triathlon method where we hit a third, a third, a third. So a third running, a third swimming, a third biking, 
Um, and as you get better at your running, that biking can become less and more running. So you're really doing the same amount of cardio, just a third of the impact when you're first starting out. So the answer is it really depends on your athletic history and your strengths and weakness as to how you best navigate all the different training options that you have in front of you. So hope that answer you guys. I appreciate you guys listening. Um, if I missed your question, you can always email me stuartstusmith.com. Happy to answer you. You can send me some swim videos to that email, or you can DM me over on Instagram. Happy to um, work with you on the Instagram DMs as well. Um, and yeah, Live15 coupon code saves you 15% over at Stu Smith Fitness. Um, and check out the latest video over on uh, YouTube. I did a uh, box opening from General Discharge. Really cool uh, recon prep box that they sell that they sent to us. I gave it to one of our recon candidates, and he's real happy with the ruck that's in it, the, you know, all the recon paraphernalia and all that stuff and good, good stuff in there. So highly recommend checking that out. All right, folks, we got to go. I will see you guys later. Um, you guys have a good week. I'll be back tomorrow as well. So see you then.